Hello everybody and thanks for joining me. Today I'm tying a little variant on one of my favourite and most productive coronamid patterns, the traffic light buzzer. The hook I'm using is a Hanak H280 size 12 wet fly hook. I'll tie this from 10s down to 18s and I'll be using two threads, fluorescent fire orange for the tag and then black for the rest of the fly and these are both UTC 70 threads. For the rib I'll be taking some stripped peacock quill and I'm going to wrap that in open turns to give a really nice segmented effect to the body. Up at the thorax, there's two cheeks on this fly, and I'm using some dyed orange goose biots for those. And then for the thorax cover, two separate tinsels, one underneath the other, red holographic, underneath opal mirage. And the opal mirage has got a bit of translucency to it, so that red will show through. To finish off the fly, I'll be using a thin coat of bug bond light, or a similar UV resin, whichever you've got, or you could even use a few coats of a good quality varnish. So let's get started. I've cast on my orange UTC 70 down towards the end of the fly, taking it slightly around the hook bend, and just working back and forth I'm going to build up a little fluorescent tag. By spinning the thread flat it acts almost like a floss, and I prefer doing it this way over using something like Glow Bright or another floss. It's a bit easier to control from a bobbin. But use what you have to hand, this is just how I do it. Now I've cast off my orange thread, cast on my black, and run it down the length of the hook shank. Here I'm going to tie on my ribbing material, and that's that stripped peacock quill. I've lightly dampened it to give it a bit more flexibility, after all it can be quite brittle, and I'm tying it in by the tip, running my thread up, down, and then back up again, just to even out that body. I don't want to build up a huge amount of bulk by any stretch of the imagination, these little coronamid midge larvae, they're quite skinny and spindly little things, so I don't want to overdress the fly. Now, using my fingers and my rotary vise, I'm going to wrap in nice, even, but open turns, leaving plenty of black showing through, and you can see that that quill's going to give a really nice segmented effect. It's quite pronounced on the naturals, this segmentation, so it's well worth representing on your imitation patterns as well. A few firm wraps to secure down, and like I said, this quill's a brittle material, so supporting the hook shank with the bobbin holder, we can just break that away. I'm running my thread back down, I'm aiming to make my thorax about a fifth to a quarter of the length of the overall body. And the first material we need to tie in for the thorax is the cheeks, and I want these to be on the side of the hook and directly in line with the hook shank. Notice also that I've tied in these biots with the curved side pointing inwards, that way once we fold them forwards, that'll be on the outside, representing the wing buds of the midge larva. I flip the fly over in the vise to make sure I've got a nice even catch in and there's be a nice symmetrical set of cheeks. Looking from above the fly now I'm going to tie in my first tinsel, the opal mirage, making a couple of loose wraps, positioning it dead centre and drawing it through to length. The closer to the centre line that you can get these tinsels positioned now, the better your thorax cover will look. And of course the translucency means that a little bit of the colour and pattern from this red holographic tinsel will show through. And of course these represent the little bits of gas that get trapped inside the insect's body and help it make its perilous ascent through the water column up towards the surface. The trout cruise around and will be picking up these ascending pupa. They're pretty much helpless at that stage, so they're easy pickings for the fish. And especially for our reservoir trout, it can be a huge part of their diet so it's well worth having a few different buzzer patterns in your box. I carry several in different colours and different sizes, and it saved me from a few blank days. Here I'm just building up a little bit of the thorax, and then bringing over my first cheek. Again, I tie these in one at a time, because I like to get them really nice and even, keeping it in line with the hook shank, and two tight turns behind the hook eye to secure. Flip over and repeat on the other side. There's lots of different ways to fish these, I quite like to fish mine dead drifted with a floating line and a long leader, just letting them do their own thing in the water column, letting the wind take them. If it's a bit calmer, you can also fish them on a vertical rig underneath the dropper, or God forbid a bung, and you could even fish it as part of a washing line set up behind a booby. Now looking from the top, I'm going to bring over those tinsels, and because we got them nicely lined up earlier, it's just a matter of making a loose wrap, drawing through, and then securing down. That's pretty much all the tying done now. Once we secure that down, trim away the excess, we can build up a little bit of a head and whip finish. 
I'd go so far as to say that varnishing these is almost mandatory. There's no reason you couldn't fish it like this, but it wouldn't be a very durable fly at all. And also, adding that little bit of varnish not only protects it, but also really intensifies all the colours and adds a lot of depth to the segmentation. You'll see in a minute when the UV resin goes on, that wet look really helps bring a nice luster and a nice saturation and depth to the fly. They're really, really simple insects, these, but I think it's definitely worth representing them. I say it's such a key part of the trout's diet that you'd be almost mad to go and fish reservoirs without at least a few coronamid patterns. For people elsewhere in the world, don't worry, these bugs are all over the place. I think they're on every continent except Antarctica, so do give this one a go as well. I'm using my thin resin here. It's a little bit easier to spread out into a nice even thin layer than the slightly thicker resin. Just making sure to get every angle, every little bit. Of course you've got a long work time with these resins. They don't start to cure until they hit UV light. But look at what it's done to the colour and the saturation and the depth and that segmentation. It really brings the fly to life. With everything cured, here's a view of the finished article. Of course, there's so much variation you can put into these different tinsels. Look at how it's showing through that mirage. It makes a really beautiful effect. Tie them on a curved hook, tie them on a straight hook, tie them big, tie them small. Definitely worth having a whole variety. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed these ties. As I say, give these ones a go, and I'll catch you next time.